all of our community members, Teresa has probably the toughest time with this week's purge. Moral support leader Narita and I are here to help. So he would have been seven? Yes. Everything has been put into bins for about four years and uh, I haven't gone in to go through them or, you know, just to see what's in there. And I know it's time because we don't need to keep all of his things at this point. Okay, so you haven't opened these boxes? No. In four years? In four years. This was one of his favorite costumes. He wore it underneath his clothes. So let me suggest something. So there's there's the yes pile, and then there's a for someone else pile. Okay. For another little boy. For another little boy. Hi, Teresa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Hi, Kyle. Hey. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, it was a rough night. Yeah. But other than that, I've definitely gotten rid of probably 95% of everything. Wow, yeah. that's really so, amazing. Yeah, good for thank you. you. Thank you. Selling her late son's items is a giant step forward for Teresa. But I'm wondering if she's emotionally ready to let go of her son's most treasured item. His superhero costume. Do you like Spider-Man? Yeah. Do you love Spider-Man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when are you gonna wear this? When you get home. When you get home? <laughs> that quick? That was probably the hardest thing I had to let go of today. Yeah. As the night market approaches, budding entrepreneurs <laughs> scramble to have products to showcase. It smells delicious in here. This is so One of them is Annette Simpson, whose dream is to run her own cake business. What is it that you love about making cakes? You see the smile on their face when you give it to them. It's just incredible. Do you think there's a market? I think so. You don't sound super confident. See, where I lose the self-confidence is when I have to tell them the price. Okay. Usually they'll say, how much is it? And I know what I want to charge them, but then I start feeling guilty and I tell them half of what I should be charging. So really undervaluing yourself. Where do you think the undervaluing comes from? Maybe because I was always told I'm not artistic. But it is stopping you from being from able charging to go what I should next, be charging. Which is what you have to do if you're to make this a viable business. Yeah. And I'd like you right now to figure out how you're gonna put a price point and value on what it is that you're creating here. Yeah, I have to. This is all you got left? Yes. And the pricing, I didn't have a problem with it. Did anyone come in and say, oh my God, this is too expensive? No. I used anxiety, like oh. you would not believe. But for what? I don't know now. Congratulations, yeah. how do you feel? I feel awesome. You have a dream board that you wrote out first week. What's on there? My goal, uh, to buy a house within five years. Did you at all have the thought that not sticking with the challenge is going to lead me out of the running for winning this week's award, which may impact my long-term I dreams. definitely did not puzzle it that far. Maybe you need to talk to someone in the community that can help you say, hey, how do I meal plan? Like, if you haven't learned how to meal plan. I haven't. Okay, so that's a skills deficit. You're a Def smart girl. So you need to go back to your dream board. So what can you write on there that would be helpful? Fast food is killing my dream of having a house and stability for my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> So congratulations on opening the restaurant. Thank you. The concept behind this idea is that it is fast food that's fresh and healthy. And this is a franchise? Yes, yeah. this is the first location in Canada and uh, it started in New York City about 11 years ago. So when hubby here came home and said, let's open a restaurant, what did you say? I thought, yeah, it's not the first thing that, that would have come to my mind. So the two of you have not run a restaurant before? No. 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 So, so kind of taking a big risk, yeah. Right. We know the, the restaurant industry is a cutthroat industry. It may be counterintuitive to do um, this particular business, but when we run the numbers, there's some wisdom in pursuing something that's not necessarily our dream. Pouring their time and energy into a venture that isn't their passion is yet another risky gamble for Teresa and Jonathan. For their sakes, I hope it pays off. Really good. Good. 
Clever. Does your family need three vehicles? Yes. Absolutely. Why? I agree with the bidon. How do we not? How do we not? It would be inconvenient to not have Betty. I'm not willing to do it. No. It looks like you guys have been busy. Some stuff is stuff we've scavenged. This is actually a thing I scavenged from one of my old bosses. He was going to throw it in the garbage, but I thought I could fix it up. I just haven't had the time. Pretty much every room has stuff stored in it. There's so. a lot of stuff in here. I have lost my battle with my kitchen table yet once again. My goodness. <laughs> I think both of you are in that kind of trap of getting, acquiring, collecting things that you're not needing because somehow you've got this false perception that you're saving or maybe even earning something by collecting things, but you're not. Right, Matt? Mm -hmm. What makes you feel so sad about this? I think it's just everything that's been going on in our lives with the financial end of things and the whole disaster of a home that we live in. <laughs> Kathy and Andrew are living in all sorts of chaos, emotional and financial. For this couple, an important starting point is for them to get a handle on their clutter to build a better future. Here's where we start, kitchen table. <laughs> Don't worry about other parts in the room, because I think what happens is you think, I've got to fix it all, and then you get completely overwhelmed. So can you guys do that? Mm -hmm. The girls have called and asked me to meet with Debbie. They're seeing Debbie become more and more isolated and less a part of their family. This is Freckles. And you have names for all oh, of yeah, them. And they all know their names. What I'm seeing is someone who takes tremendous pride in her caretaking ability of these cats. And it really gives her this sense of purpose and meaning. What I would like to do is have you talk about the concerns that you have and express those to Debbie. I'm afraid that my kids will never have that. That you will be remembered for something that doesn't add up to what you are. A crazy cat lady. When you bought your home, did you picture your life looking how it does now? Absolutely not. Let's talk about the accident. Tell me about the emotional impact the accident had on you. It'll likely be quite difficult for Debbie to give up her cats. What's going to be important is that she maintain a high degree of control over the process. She's not going to respond well to anyone pushing her to make any decisions. We need to keep in mind that the cats have provided her with her primary kind of sense of purpose and meaning in her life since the car accident. Um, and it will take her quite some time to be able to adjust to the changes. The last time that we saw you, you stood up passionately talking about how you wanted to make changes in your life mm -hmm. and model behavior so your daughter doesn't follow in your footsteps. I want to be able to learn this now so I can instill it into my daughter early so she will always have money smarts. Awesome. That's why I'm here. And we haven't seen you since. That's very true. Starting the new job, um, the whole work in a 40-hour week being a mom thing was um, quite a reality check. I'm not getting home till almost 7 o'clock at night. I'm cooking dinner and then I'm cleaning up after dinner, putting her bath, and I'm going to bed. Let me challenge you a little bit. Last night you were... I went out and had a good time. So it's not that you're, you're taxed all the time. It's that you're making some choices to say, here's what I value. So you need to come back, reconnect with the community, let them know that you're still involved, even if it's for a short period of time. Okay. Okay? For Brenda to succeed at re-entering the job market, she needs to come to terms with what's been holding her back. I wanted to check in. You have met with Career Joy. Right. Now, tell me how that went. I was the triplets mom. I had really no self-worth in the job market. You're tearing up. Mm-hmm. Is it hard for you to think about who you should be, could be? Yeah. Would be? Pretty much. Hmm. Wow. This is Jody. Hi. Hi, Jody. Hi, nice to meet you. It's really nice to meet you. I was hoping to get a tour. Oh, yeah, yeah I'd love to come in and meet your yeah. birds. You got earplugs in? Yeah. Now, these birds got to be expensive. The green wings now, I believe, are going for 1800 Wow. Emmett was the first bird that I, I ever had. So what attracts you to birds? They're, they're fun, yeah. they're smart, they're very affectionate. Is there a sitting area when the boys come over or no. anywhere to no. sit down or no. have outside. a family over? Outside. They sit outside. The, nobody comes. If you're not even in a situation where you're able to meet people or have people come into your home, the option of getting hurt isn't there either. Okay, do you have 
cook dinner, like Christmas dinner no. or Thanksgiving no. or anything? I gave Anna my table. There certainly is a strong level of defensiveness that Jackie demonstrates. Uh, so the table had to go away. OK. Here's this woman who is 66 years old, unable and unwilling to go on a date, unable and unwilling to take day trips or vacations with her family. It's a very powerful statement. You're OK. You're OK. Well, I'm glad we've had a chance to get everybody together. Um, I mean, I think as we all know, we're here because there's a number of concerns. Okay, Aaron, why don't I turn things over to you? One of the main concerns is, you know, your health. All the bird dust and now the, the rats. You're my mom. You know, I love you. I'll do anything for you. I know that. It's a very hard thing for him to say. He's not the most emotional guy. I've never heard him say it before. What's your worst fear with people? make your heart hurt. Yeah. If you woke up tomorrow and the birds weren't there, what would life look like for you? I can't even imagine. Okay. Getting rid of one yeah. hurts as bad okay. as getting rid of all. Yeah. Just making yeah, you just can't imagine it. I'm not ready to choose to send them away. But you are choosing. You're choosing the birds over them. So right now, are you able to commit to getting the number down at all? I'm not, I can't do it. Okay. Here's a woman who's had decades of an attachment to birds, and it's likely that that's gonna take time for her to be able to shift. She's not at a point where she's ready to take immediate action, but the good news is, is thinking very seriously about it. 